<laughs> the Johnson Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. <laughs> The makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat present Marion and Jim Jordan as Fibber McGee and Molly with Bill Thompson, the King's Men, and Billy Mills Orchestra. The show opens with This Cat Below. We enter 79 Wistful Vista right along with the master of the house. As he opens the front gate, we follow close behind. As he runs up the porch steps, so do we. As he opens the front door, we also slip in. And as he kisses his waiting wife, uh, <clears throat> we find Fibber McGee and Molly. Hi, Molly. Hello, dearie. What are you hiding behind your back? Let me see. Oh, nothing much. Just a few flowers. <laughs> Here. Oh, a bouquet of roses. <laughs> yeah. Ah, oh, they're so lovely. Oh, it wasn't anything that any red blood... McGee, had. what have you been up to? <laughs> well, what you mean, Molly? You know very well what I mean, McGee. Huh? When a man brings his wife flowers for no reason, there's a reason. <laughs> Look, Mrs. McGee, this is an anniversary. Just five years ago today, on the 16th of April, we went on the air for Johnson's Way. Oh, heavenly day. Yeah? <laughs> for the purposes of the script, imagine me forgetting that. <laughs> yes, sir, imagine us talking ourselves red in the network every Tuesday night for five years. <laughs> Do you remember that first broadcast in New York, oh, McGee? Oh, boy, was that terrible. <laughs> and what we overheard one of the NBC vice presidents saying afterwards? What did he say? He said, well, Bill... They just hatched a turkey in Studio H. <laughs> but he says it won't live till Thanksgiving. Ah, well, I knew we could make a go of it. I had faith. Yes, you did. I sure did. It took three options to get you to move out of that tourist camp. <laughs> come in, come in, by all means. Hello there, Johnny. Hello, daughter. Telegram for you. Sign here. Oh, thanks, old-timer. Who's the wire from, McGee? Oh, boy, the president of one of the big film companies. Oh. Rodney Goldbugle, head of 19th Century Wolf. <laughs> really? What does it say? It says, my staff feels that after five years on radio, you have tremendous box office possibilities. Oh. Stop. Hmm. But I don't think so, and that's that. <laughs> Signed, Goldbugle. Hmm. Wonder he didn't send it collect. He did! What? Hey! Well, freeze my lagoon and call me Sonia. <laughs> that does it, Johnny. That absolutely does it. Freeze my lagoon and call me Sonia. That's going too far. Why, what do you mean, Mr. Oldtimer? Look, daughter, for five years now, rain or shine, fair weather and foul, week in, week out, I've been coming here to listen to your husband's bum jokes just so I could tell him the way I heard it. Hoping and praying that maybe I could improve your sense of humor. But I give up. I'm through. I wash my hands of the whole business. So long, kids. See you next week. <laughs> Why, that old spindle shank, if he thinks for a minute... The way I heard it, one fire says the other fire... <laughs> All the way! <laughs> Listen, McGee, don't 
you think it would be nice if we thanked the sponsor for our lovely five years of work? Say, that ain't a bad idea, Molly. I'll call him up long distance. Oh, wonderful. Give me the phone. Hello, operator. I want S.C. Johnson and Son, Incorporated, Racine, Wisconsin. Yeah. Oh, the moon shines tonight. Hello, Racine. Oh, is that you, Mert? Oh. <laughs> How's every little thing, Mert? It is, huh? What say, Mert? Your brother? The one that's in the Navy, huh? Oh, lost at sea, huh? Oh, that's terrible. No, it ain't, Molly. They were just trying to teach him the Morse code. He learned A and B all right, but he always got lost at sea. Oh. <laughs> What's A, Mert? Oh, they're closed up, huh? Oh, well, never mind. Racine will probably call us after this show. <laughs> so long, Mert. Say, why don't you write him a letter, McGee? That's a good idea. Where's my pen? Right there in the desk. Nice. Oh, here it is. Oh. Now, what's the matter? This pen, it's empty again. It is no such a thing. You just filled it yesterday. Oh, well, I guess it'll be all right if I just shake it, I guess. Uh, just clogged up on the po... Whoop. Oh. Uh oh Oh, McGee, look what you did. You got a big gob of ink right in the middle of the carpet. Now, how do you suppose that happened? All I done was shake the pen like this and... Uh, whoops, dad, right it, there she goes again. <laughs> All right, dearie, give it one more squirt. We might as well make this work. No, oh, no, no, I didn't mean that. <laughs> Gee, that's an awful terrible looking spot, ain't it? Better get some salt and milk quick, Molly. Salt and milk? What's that for? Why, that's the best way to take the spot out. You see, the principle is, Molly, that the salt absorbs the ink, and when it dries, you just brush it away. Oh, then what's the milk for? Just to get the salt wet. If it ain't wet, how can it dry? <laughs> Well, I'll try anything. Now, don't monkey with that spot until I get back. I don't want to have to... Ah, oh, dear, come in. Hi, mister. You want to go fishing, huh? <laughs> no. No, I don't want to go fishing. Oh, come on. It's fun. I got the net and everything. You... Hey, that ain't a fish net you've got there. That's a hair net. I know it. Well, what kind of fish you expect to get in a hair net? Herring. <laughs> Sis, don't... Oh, don't you want to go home, don't you? No, I don't you, don't you. Now, now, run along. I'm busy here trying to get an ink spot out of the carpet. How? Well, milk and salt. Honey? Yeah. How? Just, well, you just spread the salt on the spot and pour milk all over it. Oh, sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> well, don't you believe me? Yeah. <laughs> In the way it works... I suppose the salt makes the ink spot so thirsty, it drinks too much milk and gets the stomach aching. When it rolls over, you pull the carpet out from under it. <laughs> Horse feathers, says I. <laughs> Is April in your house a month of joy and sunshine, or are you living under gray clouds of the spring house cleaning bugaboo? You know, I've been in some homes where you could just feel that spring house cleaning coming on like the villain in an old-time melodrama. And yet in other homes, it doesn't seem to cause much stir. Why? Well, I can give you one good answer. Chances are the housekeeper who takes the annual cleaning job in her stride uses the genuine wax method of housekeeping. She uses genuine Johnson's wax regularly throughout the year to protect her floors, furniture, and woodwork. Also her windowsills, lampshades, refrigerator, leather goods. The coat of Johnson's wax protects these surfaces, keeps them glowing with beauty, makes cleaning infinitely easier because dust, dirt, and smudgy fingerprints can't collect on a smooth waxed surface. The result? The properly waxed home is cleaner all year. Much labor is saved, and spring house cleaning is not a great worry. You can prove this to yourself by using genuine Johnson's Wax regularly in your home. some more salt. Bring it around here. Okay. Oh, Heavenly days, the more I do to it, the worse it looks. 
McGee, I could... I could just spank you for making all this trouble. I, I don't blame you, Molly. If we weren't going to have spare ribs for supper, I'd put myself to bed without any. <laughs> I'm... I'm naughty. Oh, no, you're not. I am, too. I'm... I'm... I'm bad. <laughs> Boy, look at this room. <laughs> I ain't been in personal contact with so much salt since I got shot out of that watermelon patch in 1912. <laughs> Pour some more milk over in Mexico there, McGee. Mexico? Yeah, south of the border. <laughs> okay. There she goes. Hey, look, Molly. I got an idea. Where's there a pair of scissors? What do you want scissors for? Well, the best way to get stains out is to neutralize them, see? Go on. Maybe we're finally getting somewhere. Why, sure. Now, to neutralize the stain, you first got to know what the stain is chemically. Oh. So, the logical thing is to take a sample of the stain to a chemist. You following me? Yes, and if you stop again, I'll run over you. <laughs> Go on. So, I had a sudden inspiration. I'll cut that spot out of the carpet, take it to a good chemist. Oh, that'd leave a hole in the carpet, wouldn't it? <laughs> yes, yes, it would. Even at that, I'm not so sure it isn't a smarter idea than this salt and milk business. Look at it. Take a look at it. This living room's a foot deep in salt. <laughs> what say we bust 50 dozen eggs in here and set fire to the joint? <laughs> Boy, what an omelet. <laughs> Would I ever go to... Maybe that's the milkman. I call him up to run over here special. Come in. Oh, how do you do, Mrs. Uppington? Oh, come, come, Mr. McGee. Don't be so formal. Hi. <laughs> you seem in wonderful spirits today, Mrs. Uppington. Your eyes are just sparkling. Oh, that's because I mislaid my glasses someplace. <laughs> I, uh, did I leave them here the last time I visited? Well, I don't think so, Uppy. Uh, still, uh, I... Say, I, I like you better without them, anyway. Uh, yes, you I do? do? Yeah. Well, what you got, a pigmas prism? No. <laughs> that's a stigma prism, McGee. <laughs> Well, whatever it is, it's most inconvenient without them. Why, just now, the wind blew my hat off, and after I chased it for two blocks, I found I was pursuing Mr. Gildersleeve's bantam rooster. <laughs> well, now we know which came first, the hen or the rooster. You know, without my glasses, my eyes are so bad that I actually see a great big black spot in the center of your rug. <laughs> well, uh, that's an ink spot I spilled on the carpet, I think. Ink spot? Ink spot. Oh, oh, yes, I... Well, but what's all that white foam? Milk and salt, Mrs. Uppington. Mm -hmm. We oh. had a vague idea that was supposed to take out the ink stain. Yes. Oh, it does, my dear, it does. it does. Yes. Why, that's what we always used back in the days when I worked in the laundry. Oh. I mean... <laughs> I mean, that's, uh... That's what my maid told me. <laughs> ah, Mrs. Uppington, you certainly ironed that slip out in a hurry. <laughs> Ah, but don't worry, Eppie. Molly and I don't mind if we mingle with the mango minder. <laughs> <laughs> and it's more to your credit, Abigail, if you wiggled your way up the social ladder on your own hook. <laughs> hook and ladder Uppington, she was no as a member. Now, now, please, Mr. McGee, really, it's, it's all very well to joke. But remember, I'm not admitting anything. After all, I came from one of the oldest families in this state. Is that so? Yes. My father, the late Titus J. Bigglesworth, was the founder of Bigglesworth's Wet Wash. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, oh excuse me. I, I just remembered an appointment. Oh, my goodbye. <laughs> And she sure dresses up fit to kill, don't she, Molly? Yes, yeah, she does. At least that coat certainly looked like a shooting jacket. <laughs> but now this isn't getting this ink stain taken out, McGee. Are you sure salt and milk is the best way? Absolutely, and I think it's working, too. You can't see the stain, can you? Can't even see the carpet. <laughs> now, let me think. I believe the stain was over here someplace. Wait till I scrape the salt away. Oh, there it is. Hmm. Look at it. I thought the wet salt was supposed to absorb the stain. Hmm, maybe we should have used buttermilk. Well, here, let's put on some more salt, anyway. Uh, now some more milk. Yeah, some more. That'll I think we'd better go upstairs and put our bathing suits on, McGee. It's getting pretty deep. <laughs> Telegram for Peter McGee and Molly. Here, here, boys. Stay where you are and don't track that salt and milk all over. McGee, splash over there and take the telegram. <laughs> 
Where's the telegram, bud? Well, I'm supposed to sing it to you, Mr. Oh, McGee. Dear, oh, dear. Okay, my epistolary Pagliacci. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I sure. <clears throat> Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, dear Fibber McGee and Molly. Presented by the makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat, the no-rubbing, no-buffing floor polish that shines as it dries in 20 minutes and saves hours of housework. Happy anniversary to you. <laughs> he could have left off that Chautauqua finish. <laughs> That guy can squeeze himself in more places than a fat lady with a new girdle. <laughs> now, look, McGee, if we're going on with this milk and salt treatment, we're going to need more milk. We're down to the last seven bottles. Seven bottles? Oh, I think we got enough on there now. All we got to do is let it dry now and then brush it off. Let it dry? This mess won't be dry before Labor Day. Uh, I'll answer it, Molly. I'll get it. Oh, oh. heavenly day. Oh, oh dear. Oh. Uh, Fell right in the milk. I only had some cornflakes. Yeah. <laughs> well, kitchen. don't lay there. Get up out of it and answer the door. Okay, okay, okay. Ah, good day, my dear, and good day, uh, the good humor man, isn't it? <laughs> no, it ain't the good humor man, Boomer. That isn't a white suit, Mr. Boomer. He fell in the milk. Is that so? Yeah. Fell in the milk. <laughs> Must be studying to be a human fly. <laughs> but what, may I inquire, is the cause of all this lactic lavishness and the surrealistic salinity? What? Huh? <laughs> well, if you must know, Boomer, I spilled some ink on the carpet and we're trying to get it out. What a coincidence. I have with me the famous old Boomer recipe for removing stains from carpets. I take it there is a carpet under all this waffle batter. <laughs> And let's see your stain-removing recipe, Mr. Boomer. We're desperate enough to try anything. Certainly, certainly. Only charge you a small fee for the servers. Now, let me see. Where did I put Grandma Boomer's stain-removing recipe? <laughs> ah, it's recipe, recipe. Here's a small address book. Call it my lollipop ledger. <laughs> Sucker list, you know. <laughs> Here's a letter from an old cellmate of mine. Getting paroled next week and wants me to meet him outside the gates with a horse and buggy. Poor old Archibald. Has he been in that long? <laughs> There's an advertising circular of the Dodge Station Wagon. Beautiful car, but not for me. All my life I've had the Dodge Station Wagon. <laughs> Passport photo of my brother Burbank. <laughs> Looks like a criminal, doesn't he? Why not? <laughs> Rabbit's foot with a fallen arch. <laughs> Aha, and a sign of spring, a check for a short bark beer. <laughs> well, well, imagine that, no recipe. Oh, no, for goodness sake. Hobby would have been too technical for young Lima Bean here to have handled anyway, my dear. Oh, yeah? I'll have you know, Boomer, that I know as much about handy stuff about the house as anybody. Oh, is that so? Yes, that's so. Why, even as a kid, Boomer, I used to spend all my dough for some little gadget to make my mother's work easier. Aww. Why, buying things for that house used to keep me broke. House broke McGee, I was no that. <laughs> house broke McGee, the hale and hearty handyman, heaving and hauling hunks of heavy hickory to hurl on the hearth to help Hannah. Hannah was the hired housemaid. Happily humming a hay to hay and a hidey ho about it takes a heck of a heap of hokum to make a house a home. Whooping and hollering as a handily hemmed a handful of hankies or hammered a handle on a hardwood high boy. Hags and touchsters about a hat full of honeydews and hitting the hay with these words in my ears. Have I handled this hooey for five long years? <laughs> The King's Men sing Mad Dogs and Englishmen. In tropical times or certain times of day, when all the citizens retire to tear their clothes off and perspire, it's one of those rules that the greatest fools obey. Because the sun is much too sultry, and one must avoid its sultry violet ray. Papa like a boo, papa like a papa like a papa like a boo. Digger rigga digger rigga digger rigga doo. Digger rigga digger rigga digger rigga doo. The natives grieve when the white men leave their huts. 
Because they're obviously definitely nuts. Ho, ho, ho. Man, dogs, and Englishmen go out in the midday sun. The Japanese don't care to. The Chinese wouldn't dare to. The Hindus and Argentines sleep firm and bow till one. But Englishmen be testa, siesta. In the Philippines, there are lovely screens to protect you from the glare. In the Malay states, they have hats like plates, but the British shirts won't wear. At 12 noon, the natives swoon and know for the work is done. But mad dogs and Englishmen go out to the midday sun. Mad dogs and Englishmen go out to the midday sun. The toughest Burmese bandit can never understand it. In Rangoon, the heat of noon is just what the natives shun. They put their scotch or ride down and lie down. In a jungle town where the sun beats down to the rage of man and beast. The English garb of the English man only gets a bit more creased. In Bengal, to move at all is seldom ever done. But mad dogs and Englishmen go out in the midday sun. Mad dogs and Englishmen go out in the midday sun. The smallest melee rabbit deplores a stupid habit. In Hong Kong, they strike a gong and fire off a noonday gun to reprimand each inmate who's in lay. In the mangrove swamps where the pythons romp, there's peace from 12 till 2. In caribou's lie around and snooze, for there's nothing else to do. In Bangkok, at 12 o'clock, they foam at the mouth and run. But mad dogs and Englishmen go out in the midday sun. In the midday sun, out in the midday sun, in the midday out in the midday. Uh, how's it coming, Molly? Started to fade yet? No, it hasn't. That spot is getting bigger and blacker by the minute. Well, don't give up, Molly. Keep scrubbing away and it'll come out all right. <laughs> Say, I see here by the paper that the Cubs opened in... Put that paper down and get to work, <laughs> days you got us into this milk and salt mess and you'll help get us out. Okay, okay. I've scrubbed that ink spot till I'm worn out. Between that and the smell of all this milk and salt. <laughs> you mean confidentially the ink stays? <laughs> <laughs> Don't you get it, Molly? I... Ain't funny, McGee. I thought that was pretty apt. No, it was. It's pretty apt to get you down here on your knees with another scrub brush. Okay. Walk over here and take a look at this goo. Okay. Hmm. Am I wrong, or is the color all coming out of the rug? No. For once, you're not wrong, dearie. Mm -hmm. We've absolutely ruined a lovely oriental carpet that set us back $27.95. Come in. Oh, good day, Mrs. McGee. Hello, Fibber. I... Well, what's this? Spill some salt? <laughs> Yes, Mr. Gildersleeve, and some mint. I got a gob of ink on the carpet, Gildersleeve, and we're trying to take it out by the salt and milk method. Oh, it won't work. What? What you mean it won't work, Gildersleeve? I tried it myself, McGee. It's no good. The best thing for ink stains on the carpet is root beer. Root beer? Well, I never heard of that. What do you do, just pour it on? Oh, no, no. You go out in the backyard and drink it. That takes your mind off the stain, and you come back in, throw a small rug over it, and forget it. <laughs> You're a big help, Throckmorton. Here we are in a jam, and you bust in here with a... Well, I didn't spin your darned old ink. Well, who said you did spill it? And if you weren't so ham-handed, you wouldn't always be in a mess like this. Oh. You're too primitive to be trusted with pen and ink anyway. Oh. What you need is a chisel and a slab of rock. <laughs> oh, is that so? One more crack like that gilder sleeve, and I'll box your ears. If I can find a big enough box. <laughs> now, look here, McGee. <laughs> None of your impudence, or my right hand will play my left hand a game of ping-pong with your skull. Oh, yeah? And you can use your beard for a net. I haven't got a beard. Well, you will have by the time you're old enough to tackle me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you can't intimidate me, Gildersleeve. Listen, that's, uh, that's intimidate, dear. <clears throat> it is? Yes. Yeah. Certainly it is, stupid. Intimidate. From the Latin timido. Timido, timidas, timidas. Smart, Alec. Timidamus, Timidatus, Timidam. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's not too bad to remember from my college days, is it, McGee? Oh, yeah. Your knowledge may be from college, but your Latin's from Manhattan. <laughs> is that so? Why, you little... Now, lady... now, now, hold it now. Hold it. Wait a minute. This is all beside the point. Well... Look, Mr. Gildersleeve, in your opinion, should we go on with this milk and salt treatment for that ink stain? No. Why not? Well, why should you? The carpet's ruined now. Look at it. Wouldn't dry out for several months anyway. 
What do you want in your living room, a swamp? Well, I think he's right, McGee. We might as well throw the carpet away. Sure. Well, okay. Can't say we didn't try. Grab a hold of the far end there, Gildersleeve, <laughs> old pal. Yeah. We'll roll it up. Well, uh, how about all these uh, milk bottles and all this salt and stuff? Oh, roll them up inside the rug. I'll open the window and you can throw the whole mess out. Go ahead, boys. You ready? Contact. Okay, Gildersleeve, over this way. Here we go. I got it, McGee. Raise it up a little, McGee. That's it. Now heave it out. <laughs> Oh, well, thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve. And thank you, McGee, for ruining me carpet with your fine ideas. Look at that bare floor. Look at it. <laughs> I am. <laughs> Boy, have we been dumb. <laughs> Why didn't I think of it before? <laughs> well, what's so funny? Won't that floor look beautiful with Johnson's wax on it? <laughs> <laughs> Heavenly days after five years. <laughs> Fibber and Molly will be back in just a moment. Did you know that this week has been set aside by the American Humane Association as Be Kind to Animals Week? Well, now any man, woman, or child who has ever looked down into the trusting eyes of his or her cocker spaniel or scotty doesn't need much persuading on the subject of be kind to animals. Of course, they do get into mischief. They do come tearing across the kitchen floor with muddy feet. But you shouldn't put them in the doghouse for that. There's a much easier, pleasanter remedy. Protect that linoleum with Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. And then you'll really be doing three things at once. Protecting and beautifying the floor, saving yourself hours of work, and being kinder to your pets. If you're not already using Glow Coat, you've no idea what a labor saver it really is. Glow Coat is self-polishing, requires no rubbing or buffing whatsoever. Just apply and let dry. In 20 minutes, your floor is shining with new beauty. Its colors fresh and bright. Buy a can of Johnson Self-Polishing Glow Coat from your dealer tomorrow. Folks, uh, we want to thank you, our cast, and the makers of Johnson's Wax for these pleasant five years. We especially want to thank a fellow that you don't hear much about, and that's our writer, Don Quinn, who's been with us for ten years. That's right. This has been a great day, and I'm sorry I had to spoil the day by spilling that ink. Oh, that's all right, dearie. If I hadn't worked so hard trying to scrub it off, the excitement of the anniversary would have got me anyway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> me too. I'm more to a frazzle. I'd go right up to bed if I had any brains at all. <laughs> but as it is, uh, let's go to a movie. Huh? Oh, <laughs> good night. Good night, all. This is Harlow Wilcox, speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat, inviting you all to join us again next Tuesday night. Good night. This is the National Broadcasting Company.